Simon, it's the first time I've spoken on camera since Saturday's historic win at Wembley. Um, have you come back down to earth yet? Yeah, well, we've got to pretty quick, haven't we? Um, been a great few weeks, to be fair, since qualifying. Um, burning the background, trying to keep ourselves on task for the games in between was was an experience. But, yeah, we got the reward, didn't we? It was a great day for everyone involved, great weekend. Um, yeah, we had a really good turnout and yeah, we've enjoyed it all. But once now it's in... Um, I've had the opportunity to look back on the game and reflect on it and I think we were dominant, we did deserve the win, I think we could have played better of course, I think there should have been probably a bigger margin um, based on the territory and and the way we were so dominant in you know in a large period of the game and um, that's what made it interesting in the last 10 because we didn't convert that into points but as I said I think in the week before whether it's one point two point or 40 no one cares your name's on the trophy at the end of it if you win so we'll take that one Um yeah we're moving into the next one now which is another big one before we do move on to this weekend's game let's just stick with um, the cup final um, yeah, I'm assuming you'll have spoken in the dressing room before the game about the importance of getting off to a good start and Brandon Moore crashing over after only 108 seconds. Could you have dreamed it up better yourself? Yeah, I'd barely made it to the box where I was going to watch from, to be honest. Um, that was a good start. You know, Batley are a really good team. They're good at managing possession and, and kicking well and staying in the fight. And, and they don't make many errors. And we knew we needed to be tighter at the start of the game to make sure we get a good footing in it. And, and yeah, scoring in the opening stages. I think we could have been two players prior, we could have gone in untouched. Um, but maybe that was a bit conservative from me saying we need to be managing the game well. But yeah, Brandon picked it nice and showed some strength as well because Manu is not, he's not soft touch. You're not going to shrug him off easy and to get rid of him on the floor and get the ball down was great. And a really nice uh, nerve settler, I suppose, for the boys on field. Um, and then, you know, it went from there really. And then speaking of game management, deciding to take penalties that were on offer, that were offered to us, I suppose, um, with it being that arm wrestle contest and um, when you look back on that I mean you must be pleased that the, you were able to put the points on the board at key moments in, which in the end yeah Lewis did it well knocked him over and they weren't easy kicks either to be fair yeah, I think one was quite close and in front but the others had a bit more work to do um, so yeah happy for Lewis that he stepped up and, and knocked them over for us um, we did it against London down there um, we've done it in other games at times it all depends how you feel Faz to be fair and Sometimes when you're spending time down there, it's not always the best thing to take the two because you're taking energy away and, and um, you know, you're, you're on for a try at times. But I'll be honest, we haven't been great in attack. We haven't been flowing that well. Um, so taking the two when they're on offer, particularly in a game where you can expect Bartley to have a say in it, um, you know, it was the smart play and, and thankfully it proved so as well. A couple of key moments that I think at 12 and a look with about 20 minutes to go, we found ourselves in really good position to maybe drop over at one point. Was that not a message that went down to the players or was it just um, still play what you see in front of you? I'm not sure we were in a position to drop one over fast, to be honest. Um, I think we could have poked the kick through on play five as opposed to getting tackled a couple of times and maybe got another set out of them there and see what that got us. But I don't know. I think the drop goal, 12 points is a fair cushion anyway. Um, yeah, it puts them out to another score, but at the same time, if you don't get it right, it's a seven tackler and then the momentum swing turns around where seven tackles, they'll be kicking into your your, your, your 20 really, whereas if we just turn the ball over or attempt to, re, to get a repeated set, I think then the logic behind it is basically they're going to have to go 90, 100 metres to go and score. Um, so that's the logic in that. But. You know, if it got to 12 all, we could be saying we should have took up at one pointer, but fortunately it didn't. And fair play to Batley, they showed that bulldog spirit and they came back at us, getting a couple of decent tries, one on the hooter, which is, has been moving yeah. as possibly one of the best ones. Uh, what was going through your head when they dived over in the corner in the last I think, minute? well, the first one to start with, I think that came off the back of an error. We not made any errors, we were, we were going great. I think we were 100% the second half until that point. And Lano, Problem. I'll take the blame for it because I've been into him. He's on, he's on his feet a lot. He attracts a lot of bodies. I've been into him about. Why don't you have a look for it? And because it's been really damaging, especially late in the tackle, a few bodies in there. You know, just just give us an opportunity to get out of our end a little bit easier. So obviously gone for it. Benny White's jumped on the ball, and, and then after that we were under pump. That was the kind of the period we swung it, and Batley had their their ten minutes. You know, their eight, ten or eight minutes there where they put us under pump. And the first try I thought was a back. Backdoor pass from Hudson, which I'd say is quite lucky, but at the same time took some skill to do it. Um, 
yeah, we shouldn't have been in that position, but for that error. And yeah, and then the last one, I've watched it a load of times now, to be fair. Really good try. Um, some good learning bits in it, though. And it was, it was a squeaky moment there where you've done so much and invested so much to get the win. I thought um, we didn't deserve to concede, but it was a great try. And the, the lesson in it is trying to stay together and connected because what you had was probably five chances where individuals tried to shut it down and missed it by a little bit. If we'd have just managed to keep a line, I think we might have worked it out a bit quicker, but I understand the desperation from the boys, especially when the hooter goes, everyone's just like, stop that ball now and get it over and done with. But some great skill involved from Battle, but I will say our effort is what saved it. So boys are going left and right, tracking the line, trying to make up, uh, trying to kill the possession and, and pickers had gone left and right. And if Matty G, pickers, you know, if they don't go as hard as they do and force them into the corner, I reckon they probably score that. 10, 15 metres in and then all of a sudden we probably are into the extra time part of it because you know the hardest kick is from the sideline, isn't it? Get closer the easier it gets. So for that effort we you know, we give ourselves the best chance of who we're missing as well. And speaking of effort in the build up to the last couple of minutes, uh, some of the defensive um, displays on show were un unreal to keep holding them out and then obviously that secured the win. To see the boys lifting the trophy, Halifax lads, lads that have been here a long time, lads that bleed blue and white, how proud of your boys we have to see them. We were mega. We, um, on the defence bit, I think that's your true test of what your team's made of, your mateship and you know the ability to just keep tipping up and, and being there for your mate even though they were all gone at the end because we had no possession did we for probably six minutes or so. Um, yeah, they did really well. And then, yeah, watching them at the end was a strange experience, to be honest. Um, I don't really ever want to make it about me. Um, you know, I lifted the trophy at the end. I let, the lads went up and to pick the trophy up and describe it to a few people as one of their moments when, if you've got kids, you'll get it where they could get an award and you're quite proud of seeing them do it. It's satisfying, and that was, that was quite a satisfying moment, to be fair. Enjoyed that, but happy for him because the whole weekend went really well. Our trips to London thus far have been good, they've been planned and organised really well and everyone's done a good job in the background and you know from the, the breakfast, the send off, me and Brandon did the cenotaph piece, then we all tripped round Wembley and getting getting together again on the evening and, and rather than a shirt presentation because we had them at the ground, we had a, I don't know what you'd call it, but a, t a team presentation if you like where they spoke about themselves and what it meant to them. And then they spoke about who was going to be up next and what they thought they'd bring to the team. It was really good and very emotional, to be fair. It, and that displayed you know, how much it meant to, to everyone in the room. And that was pretty fitting as well. So on the whole, yeah, just a really good weekend. Good weekend and an experience for everyone to savour, really. Those who were at close quarters who saw all the behind the scenes. And then obviously for everyone in the stand, I'm not sure it's something they'll forget anytime soon. Securing the first cup win in 11 years, first win at Wembley in 36 years after such an emotional high, how do you manage and bring the boys back down to earth for what is an important playoff running after something that's yeah. so historic like that? Well, it's new to me. Um, I've been a part of it in a playing group before, not not so much the first time, obviously, coaching. Um, it's not that hard for me, but the proof will be in the pudding, really. Um, we had a discussion on Tuesday around what the next six weeks look like and then brought that down further into what the next three weeks look like. Then obviously we narrow our focus to London, but they're all important games, and we've got to use, um, you know, that we've got to use this weekend as a momentum thing to try and go and do well. But everyone will expect us to be losing this week because it's hard to get up after a big one, um, and that's a challenge for us. London are a good side. We had a really tight encounter with them down there, where another grind them out sort of game. Um, I'd like it if we could play a bit more this time. Um, but yeah, it's a challenge, but Tuesday we got in, Cobweb's off, had a run around and you know played a few games and bits, which is good. But yeah, we have to start our focus, uh, narrowing our focus tonight, and we will. It'll be all about getting the work done now and, and looking forward to another tough game at weekend. And on the other side of that, rather than sort of bringing them back down to earth, is there an element that you could perhaps use that enthusiasm to your advantage to sort of the positive vibe, sort of ride a crest of a wave? So yeah, I mean, the effort piece, the, the effort in rugby league goes a long way. Um, and our effort for the last month has been very good. 
So I'm expecting those standards to be kept. And if we can tweak a couple of bits and be a little bit smarter with our end of sets and, and challenge the opposition a bit more, I think, there's no reason why we can't go and get the win down there. Um, and the lads know that now. I think confidence-wise, it's the best they've been all year um, in what has been a difficult year. And, and I will make mention as well, Keezer, for me, is best half in comp. And we've handled that really well. I know we haven't always got the wins, but the blokes that have took on a bit more responsibility have done a good job of it. And, and Keys is chomping at the bit now, whether it's this week or next, we'll see. But he ain't far off at all. And and he's, this break's been really good for him as well. Um, seeing it through my eyes, if you like, where we've, he's sat next to me a few times, watched game, and he's, he's seen how much of an influence he can be on our team. And we're really looking forward to having him back. And obviously, we've got Sutton, you know, who's a new player as well. Um, you know, two quality players to push into our group toward the end now. Um, yeah, we're really looking, looking forward to it and that also adds to our competition for places which should hopefully um, aid our performances as well. Yeah, speaking of tweaking things and competition for places, is this a, a week to utilise the full squad, maybe the lads that haven't played in a couple of weeks? Yeah, there'll be a couple of changes. Fresh. There'll be a couple of changes. Crooks has been great for us um, since arriving and obviously with the cup tied and all the rest of it, that's what that's what's hindered him, but I think had he not been cup tied, it, I don't think we'd have left him out this weekend, which would have made for another difficult decision and conversation, I suppose. But now I think Crooksy comes back in. I want to get Sutty in as well. He needs to get a game. Um, you know, training, trained well the few times he's trained, um, jumped straight in as a really good teammate this weekend, which was great. Um, he needs to get out there, and he'll add some quality to us as well. So it's just how we put it all together, to be honest, Faz. And there's a couple of boys who are a bit bruised from what was a, a tough encounter at weekend, but. Tonight's the night where we decide and we get through a tough session tonight and, and that'll sort of dictate how it all looks. Yeah, speaking of, of bruised bodies and things of that nature, um, you spoke in the build-up to the final about maybe lads that might be carrying knocks, um, hiding them because they don't want to not be involved in cup finals. And what's the injury reports come from Wembley? Obviously we saw Calcott with a cut head that had to be bandaged, uh, bloodied and battered, but you know, still still going strong yeah, for his team. Yeah, he's Any fine. Report? Cali's fine, that's just... It's just part of the game, it just adds a bit of character. Um, Kev has been carrying a knee for a long time. Um, tough few weeks, he's been big for us. I think he might struggle this week. Um, dead legs, sore bits and bobs. I don't think there's anyone who's going to be screaming for a week off, to be honest, because I think they're all pretty pumped about what they can achieve now. They've obviously had a taste of what success looks like, um, and there's plenty to go at. So. Yeah, we'll check them tonight, as I say, but tonight will be a, a physical one to get ready for the weekend, so we'll, that'll sort of reveal any, any bumps that are a bit too are a bit too bad, if you like. And finally, then, it's a, another trip down to London. I think it's the third in, in five weeks, but you're staying in the same hotel. Are you looking to sort of replicate the preparation? Yeah, we're not staying in the same hotel. We're moving a little bit closer. Same the village hotel. We're yeah. going to stay in a different one, closer to uh, Wimbledon, um, to the stadium there. And... Replicate trip, yeah, it's it's been good, done really well. So John, between John and the office staff, they've managed to put together you know, a pretty good routine of how it works. It's not ideal jumping on that bus back down to London, but it is what it is. Um, and as I said, looking forward to the challenge. That again, the expectation will be that we drop off this week. So we'll see. That's the challenge for the lads.